In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you reveal yourself in love. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 14, commencing from verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, so that he may be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot see, because it does not see him, nor know him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world does not see me anymore, but you see me. Because I live in you, you shall live also. At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me, and he who loves me shall be loved by my Father. And I will love him and will reveal myself to him. This is the Gospel of Christ. We did not ask to be born. We did not ask to be put on this journey through a barren land. In this world, we have, we have to fight for our very existence. When knowledge seems to rule the day and faith has got no place. In this place, we did not ask to be. But we are here by God's design and desire. God planned. For this to happen. And it happened. And here we are, travelling in a wilderness to grow in strength and purity, so that we may become one with the Father in love. Last week we read that. Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions, and I go to prepare a place for you. We know that Jesus Christ is merciful. We know that God the Father is merciful. Because they sent the Holy Spirit to be with us and to be in us. But do we love God? Do we love the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the one God? Because if we love them, we will do what they command. If we love Christ, we will obey. That obedience towards Christ is not a choice. It is a command. The only choice you had <clears throat> was to receive and accept the resurrection of Jesus Christ 
and salvation through him. And you were baptized in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now that that has been done, you have no choice. Because you cannot make a mockery of God, and you cannot make a mockery of the Holy Spirit, nor the promise of Jesus Christ that you will have eternal life. And if by your baptism you believed that you were not really saved, then you need to ask for God to have mercy on you. Because that is defiling our faith. Our faith is in love, yes. Our faith is in love for one another and love above all to God. But do we have the Holy Spirit? Is the Holy Spirit in you? Is He in this congregation? Is He part of your life? Is the Holy Spirit in you? The Holy Spirit should be in you. But if you do not obey Christ's commandments, the Holy Spirit cannot be in you. And therefore you cannot be guided by the Holy Spirit. And this is written in Scripture. This is what Christ is saying here. If you love me, keep my commandments. And you will pray to the Father for the Holy Spirit to come and dwell in us and be with us and guide us. The Holy Spirit before this time, before Pentecost, was with us. But now, Christ says, the Holy Spirit is in us and we are in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. Please do not get me wrong. It is the Spirit of God that is within us. It is the Spirit of Christ who is God because we believe in one God. And He promises He will not leave us orphans. We are not orphans with the Holy Spirit. We are orphans without the Holy Spirit. Because in this world we must wonder, and the world does not know Him. For the world is in sin, and the world is a place of destruction, debauchery, and evil. Do you love your God? If you love your God, keep His commandments so that He may send His Holy Spirit to you and His Holy Spirit may be in you and you may work according to His will. We often talk about gifts of the Spirit. But what truth is there in gifts of the Spirit if you do not have the Spirit? Last week I said examine yourself. Examine yourself and see what gift the Spirit of God has given you. What gift were you born with that you can bring into this congregation to glorify God with? Not to glorify yourself or men, or even this building or parish, but glorify God alone. This is what I meant by examining yourself. Do you love God? Because if you love God, you have the Holy Spirit. Because you do not break God's commandments. And the Holy Spirit gives you gifts and empowers you to do God's will. I don't know how many of you have the gift of prophecy. I would love for you to tell me 
I don't know how many of you have the gift of healing. Can you imagine how we can heal one another, not only physically, but spiritually? We should all have the gift of love. We should all practice charity. But there are those who are given a special ability to demonstrate that love and that charity. And that is a gift also. All these things we need in this congregation, in this body, in order to let this body grow so that God may be glorified, so that Jesus Christ did not die in vain on the cross of Calvary. Jesus Christ made promises. What promises did we make to him? At our confirmation, yes, we made promises. Did we keep those promises? Are we living according to those promises? Because if you made those promises to God and you are not living according to those promises that you made at your confirmation, you need to turn around and look at your father's face and say, Father, have mercy on me because I am a sinner. Father, love me for who I am and he does love you for who you are. But if you are part of this world, he can have no part of you. Because he said, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him nor know him. The Spirit of Truth. John, John chapter 14 verse 17 says, The Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, who dwells with you, he is here. And shall be in you, and shall be in you, and shall be in you. If the Spirit of God is in you, then where are you today in your faith? Are you growing in stature? Are you spending this time that we are separated from each other to examine yourself and to develop yourself into the being that God desires you to be. He planned for you to be on this earth. You had a decision to accept him, accept him. And woe to you if you said you accept him, but in actual fact you do not believe. Because I can tell you now with certainty, God lives. God is, and Jesus Christ is with the Holy Spirit. I know that. I'm a man. I make mistakes. I do sin, and I do get tempted. And because of the forgiveness that Jesus Christ displayed, in my heart, because of his forgiveness, I know he lives. Jesus Christ said, when you receive me, I will write the commandments on your heart. So if you have the Holy Spirit, you know within your heart, within yourself what you are capable of, who you are, and where you stand with God. We can break the law of a country, and we can be prosecuted according to those laws. But there is a law that we break in a country which 
until recently held the death penalty, and many countries did, and still do. And that is the law of treason. If you made treason against your country, if you caused collusion with an enemy state, you were governed by a court and judged, and if you were found guilty, you would have lost your life. It was the case with Nelson Mandela, but fortunately the government of the day thought that it would be making him a martyr, so they decided to keep him in Robben Island instead of executing him. But he could have been executed. If you break the law of Christ by colluding with the world, if you break the law of Christ by colluding with the world, you are committing treason against God. Treason. The very penalty that holds a death penalty But yet, God is merciful, because Jesus Christ died so that you don't have to die when you commit treason against God. He is merciful, so you can say, forgive me, Father, have mercy on me, for I am a sinner. We, in actual fact, we should all be put to death for committing treason. Because every one of us work in the world. We walk in darkness so often that we do not see the light. And then we ask and we cry, why, why, why? Jesus Christ says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, so that he may be with you forever. Colluding with the world is conspiring against God. You realize that. By colluding with the world, you are conspiring against God. You are conspiring to do an injustice against God and that hurts our Father. And it makes a mockery of the death and crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Ask forgiveness for that like I do. Because it is a terrible thing to realize that you are conspiring against God in your sin. Most of our conspiracies that we do against God are when we lust and we desire and we covet. In lust we cannot have love. Desire breeds sexual immorality and to covet something breeds murder and lies and cheating and all the rest of it. Corruption is when we covet something that is not ours and we make a plan to get it. That is why it is important as believers in Jesus Christ to acknowledge that our money means little to our salvation. And therefore we should not worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will take care of itself in the name of Jesus Christ for those who love Christ and for those who obey His law and are walking in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit in 
them. This is the love of God, that He forgives our conspiring against Him, so that we may receive the Holy Spirit and continue walking in His graces, so that we may rise to eternal life with Jesus Christ. And I look forward to that day that I will rise to eternal life. So I ask you again, examine yourself. Examine yourself what gifts you can bring to the body of Christ and start bringing them to the body of Christ. Because if you love God, if you love Jesus Christ, you will do this. Because the Holy Spirit is in you and guiding you to do something. And when you do not do what the Holy Spirit desires you to do, you are conspiring against God. You are conspiring against God, who is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You are conspiring against all three of them. And that is a grievous, grievous sin. And you need to repent of that sin. And bring your gift to the altar. So that we, as a body of Christ, may glorify His mighty name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lived, who died, who rose, and who lives for all eternity. One God, now and forever. Amen. God bless you. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you, humbled on our knees. We rip our clothes, Lord, and we feel like tearing out our hair because of the sin we commit against you. But yet we love you. Father God, forgive us our sins and our transgressions. Make us one with you and build us with you. One God. Oh Father, let us be your body. Let us be your instruments. Let us be your tools so that we may bring glory to you and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Have a pleasant day. May God keep you. And may He restore you to Himself. In Jesus Christ's name. For those who have forgotten what the inside of our chapel looks like, here is a moment for you. What a beautiful place of worship we have. Let's keep it. The place, our sanctuary, where we can come and spend time with our Father. Amen.